Uh, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today evening. So welcome everybody to this talk. Uh, we are, as we all know, in the midst of this pandemic and the pandemic has actually opened up a need for us to improve the kind of healthcare facilities that we have. And uh, while this work, of course, was started long before the pandemic uh, actually came up, uh, it's now come to a stage where it's both urgent and almost ready. And so this would be a great time for us to look at uh, what we can do to make it come alive. So first the question really comes down to what is the national health stack? And to do this, I'm actually going to draw back upon what the India stack was about. So the India stack, as we know, is a collection of APIs, each with a different owner, which then collectively provide a strong basis for formalization. Some of the best use cases that have been there so far have been around financial inclusion and democratization of credit. And the way that has worked is that, I don't know how many of you have seen this diagram earlier, but this is a, uh, where we, when we first expressed the idea of the stack, we put it in the context of the user. And we said that if a user like Rajni as defined here needs to get access to a loan, what needs to come together to make it happen? And it's a combination of digital public infrastructure and market innovators together who come to meet the needs of uh, Rajni to deliver this. Work on this started you know, on, in 2013 and it's still work in progress. Uh, one of the last layers that has started to come alive is actually around data consent. And this has we come together in the form of an NBFC account aggregator for the financial situation. Now, moving on to the health stack, here the objective was to enable a world-class universal health system, which for India, we need to have a radically high affordability index, very high access, and yet have extremely good quality. So to do this, a three-pronged approach was taken up to make this alive. The first really was to improve the efficiency and capacity of the care delivery system. And this, we put a strong digital foundation in there. The second piece, and as you have learned from our experience with India Stack, was to realign incentives so that the approach can go from being a complete delivery of care instead of being a purely transactional, cure-focused approach. And finally, we learned that we have to leverage significant healthcare events. So for example, the launch of Ayushman Bharat and now the pandemic. Uh, to increase the scale and accelerate the development of the ecosystem so that we can get to the final goal of this wonderful healthcare system that we all deserve. Now, this brings us to the health stack itself. So if, you know, this is a fairly complex diagram and I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on this. So starting from the bottom is really the foundational elements that you would bring from what is around us. So this would be JAM and India stack. And layered on this are really the plumbing layer, which is very strong digital infrastructure. Uh, so for example, a national registry of doctors and nurses, facilities, uh, drugs, pharmacies, and so on. Uh, all of these really need to be available in a digital form so that they can then be used for the purpose of healthcare delivery. Uh, the next piece is actually around the personal health records. Uh, personal health records include everything from uh, electronic prescription, uh, discharge summary, diagnostic reports, labs, and so on. And finally, because all of this is going to be paid for, and if you remember, we talked about Ayushman Bharat, the whole idea of starting uh, with an insurance program, such like Ayushman Bharat, which covers everyone uh, below a certain uh, poverty threshold in the country, uh, is to build a claim switch which can allow for uh, insurance claims to be processed very, very quickly. And so that then the health providers can be paid in time and hence you know, make the thing move much faster. To take these individual pieces together, you then need a layer which will then do the orchestration and uh, delivery of services. So for example, you need a protocol server which understands how a particular What's the protocol to treat a particular ailment? Uh, you need diagnostic bots. You need matching engines, which will match uh, patients to providers or uh, you know, other kinds of matching that will be required. 
Uh, this layer is all a part of a digital public infrastructure. It's uh, owned, uh, you know, and operated in a way that everyone can access it. And then this has to be layered on top with private innovation. And the private innovation comes in the form of an open health services network, which includes, uh, today we are seeing a lot of teleconsulting programs come up and outpatient uh, delivery of healthcare. And all of these could then sit on top of this digital public infrastructure to deliver these services to the end users. So this could be in the form of a teleconsulting applica uh, application on somebody's phone, it could be an OPD application, it could be done over a, um, you know, inbound uh, call center and so on. Uh, this is then linked with inpatient treatments, uh, pharmacy, diagnostics. And then we are actually seeing a uh, new type of entity come up, which provides care for the patient. And they are actually, uh, they act as fiduciaries in terms of the patients, uh, what they do. So for example, we see people providing long-term diabetic care or for people for care with chronic ailments and so on as well as uh, you know, care within, say, for a particular treatment program. Uh, and then these can get better served through health information systems and lab information systems, as well as other platforms. And all of this is a combination of the government, private apps, platforms, which will together uh, put the right user experience and enable all of us to access the kind of healthcare that we are putting together. So if you think of it, you know, come back to that same analogy with the uh, India stack, we see a, you know, the user at the center and their needs as expressed by the user, you know, around them, which are then uh, met by market innovators who are building a lot of the user facing front ends. And this is then supported by digital public infrastructure. So if you sort of think of the, previous stack diagram, uh, it's kind of inverted so that it becomes very user facing. And so the user is right at the center of everything we do. And so logically, if you think of the user journey, the user would want to seek care for certain elements they have. And this would then be provided by various health monitoring apps and through personal health records. This would need a health ID as a part of the digital uh, infrastructure. Uh, the user would then want to share data with their care fiduciaries. And again, we have PHR comes in this situation. Uh, analytics enables these care fiduciaries to actually point you to the right care. Uh, and then this would result in getting the right options for care and the matching engine and registries would play a big role in here. And then finally, the user would accept the best option. And in here, you would see nudges coming from gamification policies, matching engines, et cetera. Uh, the person would receive their care, this would involve teleconsultation, diagnostics, pharmacies, inpatient visits, et cetera, uh, manage their health records. And then once uh, you get to a certain point, then you would raise the claim to an insurance policy and make the payment happen. And so all of this is really from the user's perspective, all their needs coming together through an ecosystem, which is built on top of a public infrastructure. And this then actually uh, creates a uh, massive opportunities for healthcare players to uh, come in. And so for example, uh, you would see them accelerate time to market adoption because they're leveraging public platforms that enhance trust. They're unlocking digital data to build AI-based solutions. Uh, it will also enable a completely new category of players who provide a continuous pair uh, care and augmentation solutions. Sorry. So what will this national health stack enable? It, of course, uh, one of the core pieces that it enables is the personal health records. Personal health records will basically contain a summary of the diagnostic reports, discharge summaries, prescriptions, and it should be available on people's phones. And all of this can come together from different providers and that would uh, make this come alive. Uh, teleconsultation services, again, they could use the PHR and that would then provide the information to the healthcare provider. And then the healthcare provider would talk to the patient and come up with a prescription 
which would again get back into the personal health record. This will in, uh, just as you're doing teleconsultation, it could also uh, enable outpatient visits and inpatient care. Uh, we expect that because the cost of processing and health claim will come down significantly, uh, insurance companies will be very comfortable with covering OPD costs as well, and not just inpatient care, uh, which is what they do today. In addition to this, uh, because this is a digital public infrastructure, it will help monitor outbreaks and mapping for pandemic-like situations. It will create an access to a digital data, data set for researchers. Uh, this, of course, will happen with patient consent, which will enable better AI modeling and will eventually create better decision support systems for patients. Uh, this will improve preventive care. And for example, this would uh, allow patients to monitor their health better uh, through maybe a better uh, availability of biomarker monitoring, which would then allow you to sort of allow patients to actually move towards wellness and not really worry, not to getting treated because that would be the wrong outcome. So if you think in terms of the opportunities, you want to sort of think in terms of the different players involved. At the core, we of course have the new health stack infrastructure coming up. Uh, then we have digital health providers who are going to be facilitators for users. We have the um, healthcare providers themselves, for example, hospitals, clinics, and people building devices that provide personalized healthcare. And then finally, we of course have the payers and insurers who are going to pay for this. So it's sort of just walking through each of these components and how we expect that they will change. So infrastructure is really the first thing that's already starting to come up. We are seeing the creation of doctor registries, hospital registries, labs, et cetera, uh, even as we speak. And this is really the strong foundation that you need uh, without which you cannot actually build any of the layers above it. We are seeing electronic health record tools come up. And again, these will continue to evolve and uh, we do expect to see a fair amount of innovation on this. Uh, we would expect to see automation of claims processing through claim switches coming in, which will connect healthcare providers to insurance companies. Uh, consent management to make sure that patients are able to provide informed consent so that uh, healthcare providers can access uh, sensitive personal data like uh, health records and uh, provide services to the user. And yet at the same time, protect users so that their data cannot be misused. Uh, and finally, because the entire system is quite highly regulated, you need to make sure you can do auditing and compliance checks. Uh, then we expect to see a completely new set of digital health providers. Uh, these will find accelerated adoption uh, because of enhanced trust in the ecosystem. Uh, the standard of care will be driven by the protocol server and hence will allow people to be very comfortable that the care they're getting is best in class or comparable to what the best standards are. Uh, the, there are agreed transparent business rules at the health services network. Uh, which will actually provide the orchestration between front-end providers and back-end providers so that the entire uh, process is seamless for the user and that people can get paid in time and hence reduce costs. And so all of this is a result of increased trust. And so from a, uh, you know, I'm an investor and, you know, we look to invest. So that we are going to see many of these people come in providing digital health lockers, advisory services, care managers, uh, insurance managers to help claims, teleconsultation providers, et cetera. All of this is expected to come in the, uh, in the ecosystem very shortly. In addition to this, we will expect to see new healthcare providers who will uh, build in uh, decision support tools, hospital information systems. There'll be newer medical devices to provide uh, monitoring of patients themselves. And all of this is going to be driven by a lot of analytics data, which will help us to transform the hospital industry. And this will also, because we expect claims processing to become much faster, this will improve the working capital requirements for hospitals. And then finally, from the insurer's side, we will expect that because many of these things which were taking a bulk of their time today are going to get automated, 
we should expect to see a bunch of uh, digital personalized health insurance products that will be enabled, the better underwriting models because there's more data available which will allow us to make better decisions, and at the same time, provide pricing flexibility from personalization. And finally, we expect all of this will move towards a wellness regime and not a care regime, because that's really, I think, the best outcome that we can hope for. So that being said, if we think in terms of the uh, whole uh, universe of what people expect from healthcare, so if you are well, you know, you really today have no action, but what do you want to do is move towards active prevention. And this is where your healthcare fiduciaries can come in and help you sort of say that it's fine, you're well, but you know, you need to exercise, you need to do whatever it takes. Uh, if you start to become at risk, uh, biomarker screening can help us sort of let people know that they're at risk and hence uh, go back towards the wellness state and get into active prevention. Uh, if you have early symptoms, you would want to go from, uh, you know, just seeking information online. Uh, you would actually go to care fiduciary who would then help you uh, deal with the symptoms you're seeing. Uh, diagnosis would be better done. Uh, if you uh, are unfortunate and get hospitalized, then you'd actually have protocols driving best practices. And all of this is powered through a strong digital foundation. And that really will give us a better outcome for all. And finally, if you so happen to require chronic care, then you know you would want to have a cohort-based guidance on helping you get through it so that you come out and we are much better off. So this is really the way we expect to see the world change because of what the health stack is doing. And it's a sea change. But you know, from an entrepreneur's perspective, this is the best time to get involved because this is really where you've got these massive problems facing our society. And this is an opportunity to solve those problems and to get involved to create a better future because there's an entire ecosystem at work trying to do this. And every effort to solve problems can then result in a better outcome. Uh, thank you.